Firstly, John Wong from Altair Studio. Hey. Philbert Tong from Quick Who. David Yu from Divit Solution. And Lars Rinner from Butterfly Flexible Seating Solutions. Give it up for the four individuals uh, who will introduce their respective aviation tech startups. First up, John Wong from right. Altair Studio. Okay, uh, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name's John Wong, I'm from Altair Studio, a visualization startup. So basically what we found uh, when, when we were doing some visualization work before was that people had a hard time visualizing uh, stuff like floor plans and technical documents and how to turn those into a tan and how those in turn become a uh, tangible concept for people at uh, th that's uh, <laughs> sorry the end product basically so if you look at the image up here i know it's not very doesn't look very aviation related at the moment but the general idea is we want to make big projects so for example like we've got we've got quite some experience doing luxury re luxury residential projects in the united states um and how things like you know um room layouts and floor plans how can they combine and become an actual house. So in the, and we've also done a tech demo internally before for private jets where this would be the you know, jet on a tabletop as a scale model. And then how in turn we can break those apart as you can see in the top image with the, with the house into its individual components, highlight the things that a manufacturer in this, um, or a private jet producer in this case would want to highlight and tell people about those features like as it, looking at it from a bird's eye, like macro perspective, and then changing things like layouts, things that would be usually very flat, um, if I may say so myself. And then, and then going from that down to being inside the aircraft, a on the ground experience where you can see it both either on screen or in VR, do we get the sense of scale, the sense of the space, and then also be able to change things on the fly like, um, like seating layouts and material choices. So that's our flagship product. We also do all the standard stuff like animations, instruction videos, and visualization images for other unrealized ideas. Thank you very much. So um, I can see a few in the crowd who'd be looking at private jets, uh, wanting to visualize how their private jets would look like. So who would you want to meet in the audience today or, or in the near future? Okay, it's actually not just private jets. We want to give a call to like because uh, earlier today, there was the quote that stuck to me. It's like, this is the end of the beginning, really. So the landscape's gonna change. People have lots of exciting ideas, you know, whatever they may be. I mean, I, we all see Lars's um, airplane seats over there that he will talk about in a minute. You know, all these unrealized ideas, we want to get to know all you people and then how to get, and then we wanna help you get your idea out to the people in a very informative and intuitive way. Um, into intuitive format, basically. Okay, um, next up is Philbert Tong. Uh, like your name uh, at, uh, at Quiku, like your name suggests, you've got a fairly cool product. Uh, what is it? Uh, can you tell us? We've got two minutes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting us. It's great to be out. Uh, my name is Philbert. I am the Assistant Head of Products and Technology at Quiku. So Quiku is actually a Singapore-based company. Uh, we have an innovative and extensive suite of hardware and software solutions. And uh, we are specialized in distilling knowledge from multidisciplinary data in order to improve efficiency and also solve problems for a variety of industries. So on to today's uh, aviation topic. So the drone market is actually becoming increasingly accessible. So with uh, technology advancing in, in the way that it has, the, the barriers to entry are getting quite low. It's actually quite easy to purchase commercially either drones themselves or parts to build your own drones. And due to this, there is an uptick of drone traffic and also um, drone activity. And with this uptick, there are associated risks and also um, uh, problems that arise. And this could be extended to physical risks, such as uh, drones uh, crashing or damaging property or when, uh, when people are involved. Uh, they can also extend to more metaphysical risks like uh, cybersecurity or privacy. Um, so uh, we work with a market leader 
uh, that in airspace security, and we provide counter drone systems for uh, airports, uh, military assets, um, private facilities, correctional facilities, governments, and more. And we really combine state-of-the-art sensing technology uh, with our best-in-class uh, software in order to uh, provide an early warning, uh, identification, and uh, mitigation of drones, bad actors. So um, you're somewhat ahead of the startup curve. So who, who are you looking to meet now, whether here or, or uh, in, the, in the industry? So with Hong Kong and actually really great to China being, being such a huge market for, for drones in general with uh, companies like DJI, um, you, you have a lot of different uh, opportunities to protect different private facilities and also for government facilities as well. So we would really like to meet some potential customers from that sector and also if we have some authorities that we could work together with in order to improve the air safe security in Hong Kong, Greater Bay Area, um, and it also internationally. Uh, like I said, we are a Singapore-based company, but we, would, uh, we have been expanding in Hong Kong as well. We have an office here. And uh, yeah, that's really who, who we'd like to see. Thank you, Philbert. Next, we have David Yu. David, buy now, pay later platforms have taken the world by storm. Tell us about your aviation offering. Two minutes. Were it not for loyalty, airlines would be insolvent. American Airlines, Delta United, all raised financing secured against their loyalty programs, each valued at between 25 to $30 billion. The value of those um, loyalty programs is underpinned by one thing, and that is the choice of credit card. Delta makes five to $6 billion a year selling points to American Express alone. We think that loyalty can do so much more and billions more in value can be unlocked. We've created the airlines industry's own buy now, pay later platform, the world's fastest growing payment method. Market leaders currently, Affirm, Afterpay, and Klarna, have created 30 to $40 billion for their shareholders in the last five years. We believe in this platform so much that we've given away 50% of our business to any airline partner that signs up to our program. And what differentiates our buy now, pay later compared to everyone else is the integration with loyalty. For the first time, we'll enable members to spend their points at any divot merchant using a points plus pay functionality. For the cash component, they'll be able to pay for that in three interest-free installments. And most importantly, Members will be able to earn more points from our payment platform than on any other payment platform because they'll earn points from Divot, they'll earn points when they repay us with a credit card, and most importantly, they'll be able to earn points through integrated merchant promotions because we believe loyalty will drive more than just payment choice. Loyalty can also uh, influence the choice of product, the choice of brand, and the choice of channel. So we're super excited to be launching in Hong Kong in the next two months with our first major airline partner. And we're looking forward to teaming up with more airlines around the world to take our solution global. So, so you're looking to look at more airlines, meet more airlines, but at this stage of your development, anyone else in the room that you uh, want to connect with? Yeah, you know, what, what underpins our um, business model is, is partnership with airlines. And so we've been able to speak to Singapore Airlines, uh, Qantas, AirAsia, IAG, and we know that all of these major carriers are looking for buy now, pay later solutions to enable flights to be cheaper for their customers. Um, I think the thing which could potentially hold us back is access to finance because, you know, frankly, we've got, um, we've got a product which is poised for success. You know, loyalty is basically what drives credit card choice we believe it will be exactly the same for buy now, pay later, and we're looking for financing partners to help us achieve that growth. Thank you, David. Last but not least, Lars Rinner from Butterfly Flexible Seating Solutions. What is your pitch? Thank you very much, TJ. Paul, if you can help to click uh, on the sign one later. So um, we at Butterfly, we engineer, design, and inv we invent, sorry, we invent, design, and engineer flexible seating solutions 
for the world of air, road, and rail. We're currently ramping up our resources in uh, Northern Ireland for certification and industrialization, and uh, our manufacturing is still outsourced. Our IP for flexible aircraft seats is patented globally in the major markets in the Americas, Europe, and Asia. How does it work? Butterfly is a flexible aircraft seat that converts instantly between two premium economy class seats and a flat back business class family suite. How does it work? Each premium economy seat is set as an offset arrangement with a shell around it. And in the night, when the passenger or when the airline wants to sell as a business class seat, the outboard seat simply flips over, forms a, an ottoman, a couch, which can be used privately or to invite a guest over or to spread your belongings. And in the night, you simply flip over the inboard seat to form a very spacious bed that can be used by a business class traveler to fly diagonally or to share with your companion. Most important information today is that Butterfly is a tool. Where there's Airbus and uh, Boeing investing billions into an, uh, offering enhanced new technology like the uh, 737 MAX or the 321LR, which are made to reduce operational costs and increase mission flexibility, Butterfly as a tool was made dedicated to those aircraft because it can make them truly flexible by helping airlines to convert their cabin almost instantly between the different demand profiles of short haul and long haul missions. And that's the most important information here. Butterfly doesn't take up more space than other existing seats in the market. Flexible seating is a part of um, uh, airline operational software. So Butterfly as a flexible seat can be implemented into the standard operations of an airline. And with its uh, benefit of flexibility, it brings a wide range of benefits that can lead to uh, extra revenue, profit, and most importantly, stabilizing the cash flows. Thank you, Thank Lars. You. Very exciting. And so at this stage of your development, who are you looking to meet? Well, at this conference, for me, it is, would be a very good opportunity to, le to meet uh, leasing operators, wet lease companies, um, because I would like to discuss the opportunities that uh, Butterfly as a tool brings, A, to the customers, to airlines, to stable their top line uh, in these uncertain times, so the flexible concept, and B, that stems from the fact that you have an asset, a hardware, that can be leased out to multiple operators with different mission profiles. So you can lease it out to an operator that is focused on short haul missions, whereas the same aircraft can be leased out to long haul operators. So that is in terms of risk asset allocation and uh, risk evaluation, something I would love to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to throw it open to the panel to ask how you found Hong Kong, or more generally the Greater Bay Area, as a place to do business and particularly to meet people uh, that you want to collaborate with for your business. John. Okay, I'll keep mine short. So uh, basically in my experience, you know, Hong Kong's a very busy place and we believe that you can really find the capital and the ideas here, no shortage of that. But then sometimes when it comes down to people to there's like a middle gap where you try to look for people to help you execute. And then I think um, because of in our industry, um, there's, there is a bit of a shortage in that area. Um, I think that's probably because of the kind of like the inclinations of like the, of the talent that's available in Hong Kong. Like it's uh, because we do lots of like uh, 3, 3D artwork and then uh, there's a bit of kind of, we're finding a bit of a sh shortage to get an, you know, a expert that's in, to do like in-house work um, instead of trying to outsource that. Um, you know, sometimes when we, when we get into sensitive information, it's better to have someone on site. So um, yeah, that's my perspective. Okay, thanks John. And Philbert, uh, you're based in Singapore, but also expanding in Hong Kong. How have you found that? Um, so it's actually quite different. Originally, the solution that we have was uh, created for spaces with much more space. And with Hong Kong being such a sad, like, uh, popular city, and uh, with, with, with high rises, we need to find particular talents that would be able to help place these um, sensors and, and help uh, integrate our system into the infrastructure. So there, there is an abundance of, of uh, maybe contrary uh, 
but we, we found that there are quite a lot of talents that are able to do this, but in order to train them specifically for our system and uh, our, our hardware and software, it, it was quite difficult due to the pandemic to have people from our partners come over uh, and help develop these talents. Okay, I would like to pick up on this point, David. So in the context, context of doing business in Hong Kong, but as we know, aviation is a localized industry, but a, a global one as well. Um, how has Hong Kong placed you and what are your global am ambitions? Yeah, I think the, the major thing about Hong Kong is just that it's filled with people who want, uh, who come here for opportunity. Uh, and so I think that's the most powerful thing. It has been relatively easy uh, to find advisors, to find people who are interested in startups. And I think the lesson that I've taken away is to make sure that there's the right, right rewards in place. So we set up our business on day one, giving up 50% of our upside to our airline partners to incentivize them to sign up. We've also set up a separate pool for advisors to introduce airlines to us. Okay, so, and Lars, um, in the context of your engineering business, uh, how has Hong Kong placed you? And I guess what support perhaps government or industry support would you, would you look out for um, if you had it your way? Yeah, thank you, TJ. I think you can imagine already we are in advanced manufacturing here, and unfortunately, Hong Kong, while it is a great place for insurance and banking, all finance-related businesses, it's very hard to find the talent, the personnel here that comes not only with the engineering education, but also with the experience in manufacturing, inventing new things, and bringing them to life. Unfortunately, Hong Kong's educational, uh, engineering education and uh, the vast resources available in mainland in terms of material, infrastructure, is, uh, is quite detached. So for us, it is not, uh, not very easy. And uh, you cannot just simply go to mainland and ask a factory in Guangzhou, uh, can you make an aircraft seat for us? So also in terms of funding, Hong Kong is also rather complex to get into. And that's why we have just recently opened up a new office in Northern Ireland in Belfast. The UK and the European authorities are quite supportive with, uh, uh, with us as a young startup because um, just take some hurdles. And uh, if you take these hurdles, not only for your product, but also for going for some support, it's, uh, it's not an easy task. So long story short, it's, uh, it's a great place for marketing a product and for being in this part of the world where aviation has the strongest growth rates, absolutely. But for making it happen in terms of the engineering, manufacturing, production, certification, Hong Kong is challenging. Okay, that's an interesting perspective. So I'd like to wrap it up there because um, uh, Paul's giving me uh, some fingers. I'm, I'm not sure which one, though. Um, 30 seconds each. Uh, what advice would you give uh, budding entrepreneurs in the crowd? John. Uh, I think pretty much just go for it. Hong Kong is the land of opportunity. So I think there's nothing stopping anyone to do, execute any kind of business idea. So, yeah, that's my perspective. Uh, I'm going to agree with John here. Uh, it, it really is quite a land of opportunity. And, and there, are, there are some funding schemes that are available. Um, and you would have to look into those, but uh, it's really quite easier to, to start up um, uh, here than, than in a lot of places in the world. Uh, David? Set up as incentives to surround yourselves with the right partners and the right advisors. Nice. Find out very early on what the market really, really wants. Focus on that one. Don't lose time on finding money. There's always a way to bootstrap something and to show something to customers in a bit lighter version but really focus on the market and the customer. Okay, and we've had the uh, opportunity to have a physically held uh, conference here and you've got a physical product. Uh, quick plug there. Uh, everyone, please come over and, uh, and uh, test the seat, see its flexibility, see how comfortable it is, uh, see how much space it has, and uh, yeah, just please come, 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 come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to the panelists. Thank you. Thanks for that super interesting panel.